single word. Um, it was an amazing experience. And now being on the US and North American leg of the tour, it's just so cool to, uh, to get to put on a different kind of show. We completely revamped the stage and it's a different setup and everything because for international you have to have like a different stage that you can take everywhere. So this has been amazing having dancers and aerialists and we just played our first stadium last night in Detroit and I'm still like, I have a permanent smile on my face because of it. So we can't wait to get to Toronto too. Donna? Well, speaking of the stadium tour, uh, it's one about how massive that is. You're going to play another one tonight as well. <laughs> but you also have a few more um, on this month, I think, uh, to play. Talk about the crowds there and playing to that kind of audience. We, I'm so excited because we get to do four stadiums this month, and then um, throughout the tour we're doing four more. So it's just... It's such an amazing experience being surrounded by 50,000 people who are all singing the same thing. And, um, you know, it, it was an amazing experience last night. You look out and it's just this never-ending sea of people for as far as you can see. And um, I just felt so lucky to get to have that, that life experience and that memory, like, forever in my head. Hunter? Hi. Hey. Um, part of the music festival, uh, the money raised goes to uh, schools in uh, Nashville for music education. <coughs> also, know that we've made a bit of the concert, raised a bunch of money um, for the dress rehearsal. Uh, also, do the schools. Why isn't giving back important to a country artist like yourself? I think that I, I just feel really honored to have been put in a position by the fans to then maybe turn around and. and possibly have some sort of impact on people who are hurting or in need. You know, when the tornado happened, it was just nobody saw it coming. It was from out of nowhere, and we were sitting in rehearsal and watching the coverage of it, and it just seemed like, is there any way we can help? And it turned out that we had an empty arena booked for a dress rehearsal. Why not sell tickets? And I just am so thankful to the building and to everyone who came together to make that something that we could put together a day. And of course to the fans for coming out and helping us raise $750,000. Nancy. Can you talk about your relationship with your fans, the fact that you're larger than life, and like, yet you're able to have your mom go pick up some fans to meet you backstage? <laughs> and we have so much fun with shows because there are, of course, like several meet and greets before the show. Um, and then after the show, there's this, there's this meet and greet called the Tea Party where we go throughout the show. I have people that I trust going around. They know what I like, like what to look for, for like really passionate like people in the crowd who are maybe at the top rows or in the fourth row. But anyone who's just like dancing and having the best time throughout the entire concert or maybe they dressed up like characters from the music video or maybe they're just like all lit up or something. And we have so much fun after the show because we have all these people come into this one room. And, um, you know, it's been so much fun to try to say thank you to as many fans as I possibly can on this tour. Chris? Hi. Mean is, hey. Hey. <laughs> mean has been a big song for you at Country Radio. And I know you'd always kind of targeted that as, you know, a country single down the road. So, and it's very rootsy, so I'm hoping that that uh, pretends a bluegrass album from you someday. <laughs> Uh, a, a lot of your songs, people have wondered, you know, is it too pop for country? And I just wondered if you had any thought, anyone had any thoughts about this one being too bluegrass for country or whether you always kind of knew <laughs> it would work? Well, for me, it's just really fun to see me do well. Um, and it's so gratifying, especially judging, you know, based on what I wrote that song about. And based on the fact that it came from me going through a really tough time and writing that song because I just felt so powerless. I just didn't know what else to say or what else to do. Um, and hearing that song being sung louder than my voice is coming through the PA in a stadium is sort of the coolest experience of my life because when you write a song and it comes from such a vulnerable moment in your life and then you get to stand on a stage and the affirmation that 50,000 people have gone through that too and they're singing along, it, it's been kind of wonderful. Daniel? You, um, you recently got some um, advice from Jimmer Gibson. Um, really? Uh, there was a big article posted about it. Yes. 
Geography. What did she say? Um, I'm not sure. That's why I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> how would you um, How would you compare your career with hers? This is like the first I'm hearing of that, though. That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Way to be on top of it. I need to read more. More. No, I don't need to read anything, actually. <laughs> but that's really cool. Thanks for telling me about it. Hey, Blake. Hey, Blair. Um, you've already achieved so much success that most artists can feel only dream about. And I was wondering, do you have any personal or professional goals that you set for yourself yet? And if so, like... Absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, any award that you've won once, it's definitely a goal to uh, win that award twice, possibly. You know, you sit there and you're like, my life will be complete if I get a record deal. And then you're like, my life will be complete if I have an album come out. And then, you know, you make these goals and then as you achieve them, it's like, it would be the coolest thing in the world to get to keep doing it. Um, and so, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, all the stadiums on this tour that I've never played before, I'm really excited about playing. Um, Going to South America and touring, I'm really excited about. Going back to Australia, um, those are all things I really want to do. And what else, what else, what else? Um, I, I don't know, I mean, I would just love to keep doing this. That would be awesome. Curtis? Uh, congratulations on your CD Music Award win, by the way. Thanks! And um, can you comment a little bit on that, because it's a fan voted award, and also on being able to work with Shania for that project. Oh my gosh, okay, so um, the CMT Music Awards, I had such an amazing time like getting to be at a concert in Milwaukee and we were all in the arena there and the crowd is sitting there and then all of a sudden on the back screen, like live, the CMT Music Awards pops up. So we were like watching an award show while not being there, but then all of a sudden I'm a part of it and on the back screen at the same time. It was really interesting and um, I just was so excited that the fans decided to vote for me for that. I, they've been so amazing to me. And also the CMT Music Awards um, provided a wonderful opportunity to hang out with my biggest hero ever. That was sort of a pinch me moment. <laughs> like, I mean, driving around in an old car with Shania Twain for an entire day um, was just unbelievable. I can't say enough amazing things about her. We're going to do three more questions. It's going to be Becca, Barry, and Neil. Hey. Um, I had a chance to see your rehearsal, and I was just truly blown away by the imagination it must have taken to put that all together. I know that you said that you got a lot of inspiration from Broadway, and you have done some acting. I'm wondering, obviously not now with your life as hectic as it is, but is that ever a goal that you might have to do something actually on Broadway and take that a step further? First of all, thank you. Thanks for coming to that. Um, I get inspired by a lot of different things. And I, I feel like since I was a little kid, I've always been really just fascinated by Broadway and how you have set pieces coming in from the sides and from the ceiling and then from the floor and all of a sudden you're in a completely different world and you're sucked in and you're in the experience, um, you're in the story. Um, that's something that I've seen done really well on Broadway and um, I started out in theater so that's, that's probably stuck with me as far as inspiration goes. Um, as far as going and, and being on Broadway, it hasn't crossed my mind recently because um, I'm just having so much fun doing what I'm doing. Um, but acting has always really fascinated me too, you know. Um, I've gotten to do some, some fun stuff like host SNL and that's been one of the f most um, exciting experiences of my life so far. So I'm glad that you like the show.